altitude of 2,500 meters, Cuenca has kept the charm of its colonial past. To me, it seems to have stepped out of a picture book. Even now, it demonstrates the character of 1835, when the province had been forced to take up weaving in an economical crisis. To this day, the straw had played an important part in the economy of Cuenca, which is the only region in Ecuador where it has become part of the indigenous traditional costume. Cuenca has always chosen quantity over quality. Better heads come from Monte Cristi, but more heads from this city. They produce, they export and they win markets. Cuenca is nowadays the home of the biggest Panama head export companies in Ecuador. Omer Ortega is proud to belong to a family that has been in the business for five generations. His passion for the head is connected to its reputation among the rich overseas. His large-scale factory employs a huge number of people in the different finishing stages of the hat. Delighted, he shows me and other little fellows and curious visitors his enormous operation. Bueno, nosotros exportamos más o menos a unos 32 países. Nuestros mercados más fuertes eran Brasil y México, pero debido al mercado chino, este, los países definitivamente eh, mermaron un 80, 90%, pero hoy por hoy hemos optado, digamos, buscar mercados más selectivos, como tenemos en Estados Unidos y lo mismo en Europa. Hoy por hoy estamos vendiendo el sombrero ya con producto terminado, listo para usar. De aquí directo va a las boutiques de allá. Omero's turnover is 150,000 heads per year, but this is nothing in comparison to export numbers only 15 years ago when he sold each month the number of heads he now sells in one year. The cultural heritage is at risk because of Panama plagiarism. Cheap paper heads produced in Asia now threaten the head production in the whole of Ecuador. Most of these machines, which should provide an industrialized workflow, are switched off due to declining demand. What was once the work of the sun, Omero has now artificially improved. In estos tanques va, digamos, productos químicos para el blanqueo, y cada día tiene que mover, dar la vuelta. Calentar. Para llegar a un blanco así, se necesita 10 días. Es lo único que se hace, digamos, a maquinaria, todo es hecho, ustedes ven artesanamente, ¿no es cierto? Obviously, Omer and I have different opinions about what is made by hand. For me, the process seems more of a standardized aesthetic surgery. After different tubs, the head finally receives its new face. Digamos, de acuerdo al cliente, de como puede ver al frente, hay cientos de moldes. Que te enseñe el oceso. The daily bread is then stored in the heart of the firm. Sorted by size, style and color, around 150 to 200,000 hats are waiting to be sent to their final customers. or the customers to be sent to the heads.
At least Cuenca showed me that the head is part of the regional and economic identity. Here, it made it onto the agenda of Ecuador's tourist attractions. It is sad to see that the head doesn't have the same limelight in his real hometown. Now I know why. In Monte Cristi, the head is more than an economic good. It's a link between Ecuador's past and present. A tribute to the national history of the remaining workers who were struck carry on. More as silent admirers than as hard-bitten businessmen. Therefore, Delgados are happy if one tourist a day finds the way to their workshop. If things continue as they are, then Cuenca and the industrialized health production will survive, but not the traditional handicraft from Monte Cristi. <laughs> Where in this gloomy street, even the finishing of the hat is still carefully made by hand. Pastor is Monte Cristi's oldest hat beater and iron man, the last element in the production chain of a fine Panama hat from the coast. Till the death, says the alchemist, whitening with sulfur and smoothing with his old pulse the head. The head's journey is completed in this alchemy of earth, sun and wind. It goes through the fire to receive its final shape a la Monte Cristi. I followed the head strolling from one little light pervaded alcove of the country to another. At least 12 hands helped it to see the light of day. And now it goes back into darkness. It's an extraordinary day for Delgados. 60 hats have been ordered for a businessman in Germany. I must leave my camera to lend a hand. <laughs> So noble, so fine, so docile, that it can be easily rolled up and placed in its new home of balsa wood, sheltered and ready for a new journey. To delight somebody who hopefully treats it with due care. <laughs> and then my last day arrives. And also I could buy a super fine Panama hat for 250 pounds, which would cost me 2,500 in Europe, I buy a lower priced one. I spent 40 pounds for my first Monte Cristi Fino, which was finished in one month and is crowned with one of the last weaver's souls. I really hope that the hat comes back into the limelight. Maybe it will, with a little help from Eloel Faros and current president Rafael Correa's fighting spirits. For you, Alfaro, the constitution in Monte Cristi, proclaimed Correa, declaring a new political turnaround. The new liberal leader follows the old leader's footsteps and completes the circle of the head, bearing it with pride and promoting Ecuador's identity, popularizing a national treasure that the Valdivia culture began to weave 5,000 years ago, a treasure that fights nowadays against the contempt of cultural heritage and more profitable activities and markets. <laughs> but for me, these 20 grams of straw are a piece of life, the life of Rosendo and Victoria. Ooh. Simon, Arturo, Juan, Susana, Teresa, Homero, and Pastor, lives which will end as hopefully not the story of Ecuador's perfect and once powerful hat. El sombrero de paja toquilla, the toquilla straw hat.